Hello and welcome to the interview. Well, be prepared for some unexpected sources of inspiration with our next guest because she actually has an amazing career that brought her to space. And now she's uh, sharing this experience to empower young girls to reach for the stars. Dr. May Jemison is with us today. It's an honor to have you. Oh, thank you very much. So actually, you made history by being the very first African-American woman in space. You flew to space with the Endeavour mission of NASA back in 1992. Did you always know that one day you will be in space? So what's really interesting to me is that as a little girl, I always assumed I'd go into space because it was being a process of you were doing so many things in the world and space exploration was something that I intended to do. I never necessarily wanted to be an astronaut. I thought I would go into space just as part of my job, right? But what floored me actually about the whole uh, endeavor in many ways mm -hmm. was because I was not just the first African-American woman in space. I was the first woman of color in the entire world to go into space, which was really sad for me because I would have assumed that we would have had lots of different people in space by the time I got old enough to do that. Right, um, And so what really happened out of that was the idea of what do you do with your place at the table? Once you have a platform like that, how do you use it? Would you call it space diversity? Everyone has always been involved with space exploration. Uh -huh. So if people remember that movie, Hidden Figures, right, where African-American women were calculating orbits mm -hmm. and things, and we just never heard the story, right? The, the whole term computers comes from women who in the turn of the 1800s to the 1900s, they used to do all the computations, mathematical computations, particularly for astronomers and others. So, you know, this history of women and people being involved in space in so many ways, mm -hmm. it's very old. And so a lot of this is about how do we use this full potential of all these people that we have in the world. So in 1992, when that happened and I went up, of course, I was excited to go up. Um, and yes, it makes a difference. Yet, at the same time, we should recognize how we've always been involved. So you're definitely an astronaut, but you're more than this. You're a physician, a chemical engineer, a dancer. What defines you at the core? I think each one of us has to decide what it is we have to offer to the world. We have to decide who we are. And for me, it's about exploration. Mm -hmm. It's about creativity. It's about making a difference, that there was a reason why I was here, that I connected with people, and that some kind of way I, I had an impact on this world. And I think that that's really something that we mm -hmm. all want. Um, but, you know, we have different ways of exploring and we have different ways of going about it. So speaking of exploration, you're actually now encouraging young girls or even go from all ages and all backgrounds to engage with STEM education and to share many different solutions to overcome obstacles. Um, why is it so crucial to you? So here's where we are in the world today. Right now we're in a world where we have too much of almost everything, mm -hmm. and it's creating pollution. We are in a world where we actually have enough food to feed everyone, yet we waste it than, rather than feeding people around the world. We're in a world where we have, um, we could share energy in so many ways, we could generate energy in so many ways, yet we choose not to, and we choose mm -hmm. to use those forms of energy to super cool ho homes in some places, and leave vaccine, vaccines unrefrigerated and others. And all of these have to do with how we come up with solutions. So when we look at research, when we look at it, science and technology, engineering and mathematics, when we look at those research fields, people get to choose what they research. They get to choose what technologies they create and develop. All of those are influenced by who you are, mm -hmm. your perspective on the world. And so when you have people who have many different perspectives, it makes a difference. So yes, of course women should be involved in making those decisions, looking at that research, interpreting what was going on. But again, I'm just gonna point out that we've always been involved despite everything, right? Women have also been healers all the time. So what we need to do is to make sure that we encourage and keep um, girls going into the fields, people of color going into the fields, and that we respect and, and use that information that they can bring, the perspectives. It's not just because once you solve an equation, you come up with the same answer, mm -hmm. but what were you trying to solve for? 
right? What was it that you were seeing in the world that you were now trying to write an equation to represent? And those are the reasons why, is because we desperately need all those perspectives to be able to move forward. There's another piece of this whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, I remember when I was in, uh, in medical school, you know, when they were talking, it was years and years ago, they talked about breast cancer and the treatment for breast cancer was you take off the entire breast as a mastectomy and then you would uh, uh, do pull off the lymph nodes. It was very disfiguring. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until women became much more involved in medicine and they started getting to a lumpectomy where you just take off the lump and then you do mm -hmm. radiation therapy. It's, it's a treatment of choice now, but that wasn't happening until you had people focusing in on, you had women thinking about what this means. And so you have these different people because it makes a difference to the quality of what we see around the world. The future is female. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing always, though. You know, we've always been here. Uh -huh. And there was uh, sometimes people would ask and say, you know, women don't, you know, we, what is it? How can, how can we change the world? How can we do things? Because the world was created for men, mm -hmm. by men. But that's not true because women have raised the children. So every time we think about that and we take care of them, we're, we get to impart information to them. It's our decision in many ways to go along with these things. So you're definitely a true role model, but who are yours? The, the term role model, I think, has been misused mm -hmm. because people use role models as public figures, mm -hmm. and it's not. Public figures are just images, perhaps, of the possible. Role models are who we learn our behavior from, right? So as little kids, we learn you know, to do the task until it's finished. Role models can be good or bad, too, right? So. Um, the most powerful role models are the parents, the adults, the people that you're around. Let's go back to Space If You May for a okay. quick second. Actually launched back in 2011, uh, a program which is uh, titled The 100 Year Starship. And it's all about making humans uh, capable of traveling beyond our solar system uh, within the next 100 years. How can we make this happening? How can we make traveling in space so seamless? So here's the thing, 100 Year Starship um, is about making sure we have the capabilities for human travel beyond mm -hmm. our solar system in 100 years. That's very different from a launch date or have all the uh -oh. systems together, right? And um, I was really proud and, and pleased to lead the team that won the seed funding, really modest seed funding from DARPA to try to put together an organization to help foster this. So the issues that we're really looking at is how do you make sure we have the radical leaps in technology that we need in order to do something that incredible? Mm -hmm. um, why is it different than going to Mars, right? We have been to Mars multiple times. We can put together an engineering plan for going to Mars. We don't know how to get to another solar system. We, uh -huh. don't, have the in, we don't have the energy systems. They have to be completely different. We don't have the sustainable materials. They have to be different. We don't know enough about how our life form is integrated with the life form here on Earth. You see, when we go up to space station, we can bring our food up, mm -hmm. right? We do. We can bring our clothes up. We can refresh the microbiome in the space station. It, but once you go, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years away, you can't do that anymore. But right now, the fastest object um, that's gone let's say, the Voyager, which has uh -huh. gone out of our solar system, it's been traveling at 35,000 miles per hour since 1977. It would take it 50 to 60,000 years to get to our closest neighboring star. So you can see how this really pushes us to do things differently. So our idea, we're on 100 Year Starship, is that it's by pursuing the extraordinary that we create a better world today. When we look at what's going on in today, right now, mm -hmm. We take for granted so many things that were really sort of jump-started and are based in space, weather satellites, right, the telecommunications, treaty verifications, remote sensing, so many things that we take for granted, but it came from trying something absolutely extraordinary, what, 50 years ago. So do you think there's a planet B? A planet B. What's a planet B? It's a plan B when it comes to climate change and trying to ah. cope with the question, do we have to make this world, this Earth, a better one so that we can actually be sustainable enough to still live here in 100 years from now? Or do we have to change planets? 
So first of all, I don't, do not believe space is a plan B. Uh -uh. By pushing for the extraordinary, it helps us in the world today. But let's say we could figure out how to get to Mars. How many people could we get to Mars? Say we had 500, 1,000 people to Mars. Who gets to choose? Whose music, whose ideas, whose genetic pool goes, uh -uh. right? Whose society, what? And I think that those are the things. We get very cavalier about Earth. But this planet is part of us. And in fact, when you think about the planet Earth, we cannot survive without it. And do we actually think that we could harness all the things that we need to do and go to another planet and set up another uh, world there? We wouldn't be, if we had that technology, we would use it on ourselves and destroy ourselves first unless we come to a better understanding. In some kind of way, we have to accept and realize that we're all earthlings first. It, now let's say, maybe first doesn't work because it's not necessarily linear. But the reality is, is this planet is going to be the home for us for generations to come. It's going to be our home. So we absolutely have to figure things out. When I was in space, what I recognized as I looked down, you know, the planet is gorgeous. It mm -hmm. iridesces from within. And I recognize, you know, the moon, the stars, they're going to be here. The Earth is going to be here, but we might not be. Mm -hmm. We get this all confused. The Earth doesn't need us. We need the Earth. And so we really have to figure out ways to connect. And so for 100 Year Starship, what we're really doing is saying, how can we use this platform, right, of something really difficult and connect it back to the Earth? Dr. Mae Jensen, human at core. Thank you so much. Stay with us. More news to come on Prince 24. Sur France 24, la nuit, on est très fiers d'accompagner les Amériques dans leurs soirées, de voir l'Asie se réveiller, et on est là jusqu'à ce que Paris s'éveille. France 24 est plus que seule notice. C'est liberté, égalité et actualité. Nous nous donnons un pas plus loin, avec des informations au moment pour analyser, comprendre, mettre en perspective et débattre. Sur France 24, l'Afrique, c'est chic. In Live from Paris, our correspondents around the world keep you up to date. Vous êtes déjà plusieurs millions et de plus en plus nombreux à suivre France 24 sur les réseaux sociaux. Min al tabi'a an yakuna shi'arou al hurriya, wa khassat al hurriya al tabir fi balad hurriya al tabir.